Om Namo Narayanaya, welcome back. Today we are reading chapters 9 and 10 in book 3 of the Ramayana. Chapter 9 is called Sita Advises Rama. Addressing the son of the Raghu clan who is going forth after taking permission from Suthishna, Sita told these friendly words from her heart. Your great self will not attain Dharma if we are examining it minutely in this world by acting based on your desires. By taking recourse to one's desires, three things are attained, and these are telling untrue words, which is very bad, desiring someone else's wife, and getting angry without enmity. Since in the past you never told untrue words, it cannot be there in the future. And how can desiring someone else's wife which destroys Dharma be in you. That was never written within your heart and will never be there. O oh, Rama, as always, you are interested in only your wife. You are a follower of Dharma, a teller of truth, a follower of your father's words, and in you, Dharma, truth, and everything good is established. O oh, great man, for the one who has won over his senses, it is possible for you to shoulder all this, and I know well about how you control your senses. The third one is torturing others only due to your anger, which is done without your realizing it, and I think you are having that now. You have given your word to those sages who live in Danda Karanya that you would kill Rakshasas for protecting the sages. Because you have arrived here with your brother armed with bows and arrows, this forest has got the name Punishing Forest. This forest has got the name The Punishing Forest. Seeing that my well-prepared mind is filled with anxiety for thinking about bearing, I think that which is not good for you would happen. O oh, Rama, I do not like you going to the Dandaka forest, and I will tell you the reason, so please hear it. When you enter the forest armed with a bow and arrow along with your brother, would you not use those against those who travel in the forest? For the Kshatriyas, a bow within their reach is like fuel within the reach of fire, for both increase the strength. A long time back, there was a saint who was pure and truthful, and that forest was occupied by birds and animals. Indra, the husband of Sachi, came in the form of a soldier to the hermitage, holding a great sword to create a disturbance to the penance done there. He then gave that great sword to the hermitage for safekeeping, when the saint was sitting in penance. He who received that weapon to protect the trust that was placed on him moved about in the forest, always keeping it with him. Wherever he goes, whether it is to collect fruits or roots, the saint who was interested in guarding it, does not go without that sword. That saint, rich in penance, slowly got into the habit of carrying the weapon, and he slowly got into the habit of becoming angry, losing his determination to do penance. And then, with the constant company of that weapon, that sage started getting associated with acts which are not according to Dharma, and he went to hell. This is the story that happened due to the constant association with the weapon. Showing association with the weapon is like fuel getting associated with fire. I am telling you this with love and respect, and not reminding you or teaching you, and request you not at any time to hold your bow and kill the Rakshasas who are living in Dadanka without any enmity, for a hero does not like to kill anyone without an offense first being committed. Those kshatriyas and heroes who are habituated to stay in the forest use their bow only to protect those who suffer. Where is the weapon? Where is the forest? Where is the principle of kshatriyas? Where is penance? All these are inconsistent, and so let us follow the laws of the land. By doing service to weapons, the mind gets maligned, and you may follow the habit of kshatriyas and go back to Adotya. The love of my father-in-law and my mother-in-law will live forever. If without bothering about the kingdom, you will live a life of a saint. Wealth shines because of Dharma. Pleasure shines because of Dharma. Due to Dharma, we would get everything, and the entire essence of the earth is Dharma. 
Thus ends chapter 9. Chapter 10 is called Rama Replies to Sita. Hearing those words told because of her devotion to him, Rama, who was firm on following Dharma, replied as so. O lady, who knows Dharma, O daughter of Chanaka, you have spoken friendly, pleasing, and beneficial words which show your great heritage. O divine lady, what shall I reply to those befitting words which mention that when a Kshatriya takes the bow, the tears of misery cease to flow? Those suffering sages of Danda Karanya, who are firm in their resolute penance, have themselves approached me for protection. Living always in the forest and subsisting on fruits and grains, they do not get pleasure due to being scared by the cruel acts of the Rakshasas. The very great Rakshasas who eat human flesh eat away the sages living in Dandakarana, and those great Brahmins have come to me asking to save them from this torture. After I heard the words that fell from their mouth, I consoled them by my words, and I said to them, Be gracious to me. This is greatly insulting to me, as these should have been done by myself without your request. And then I asked those Brahmins, What should I do? And then all of them together spoke to me. They said there are many Rakshasas who can assume any form that they want, and they torture and trouble us, so Rama, please protect us. They said... They reach us when we are doing Homa, and on full and new moon days, and those flesh-eating Rakshasas who are impossible to resist trouble us. We who are sages who do penance, when troubled by them, we're searching for protection, and you are our ultimate protector. They said to me, Due to the power of the penance that we have done, we are indeed capable to kill those night fares, but we do not want to waste the power of penance that we have earned in a long time. There are many obstacles for doing our penance, and observing penance also has become greatly difficult, and so though we are being eaten by them, we do not curse them. This is what I was told, Sita. Those sages also said to me, Since you are the lord of the jungle, along with your brother, protect us. So hearing these words, I have given my word for complete protection of the sages. Having promised like this to the sages, it is not possible for me to change this course, as truth is dear to me, is it not? Now I am prepared to lose my life and to forfeit even Lakshmana and you, rather than going back for the promise that I gave to those Brahmins. So Sita, even if I have not been requested, I have to look after the sages, and so it is not proper to break my promise. Sita, you told me those words out of love to me and due to your good heart, and I am contented, and I would not tolerate uninterested ones advising me. Your correct and appropriate words are proper to your heritage, and you are my companion in observing Dharma, and dearer to me than my own soul. After Rama told these words to dear Sita, who was the princess of Mithila, armed with a bow, Rama and Lakshmana went to the pre-forest of penance. Thus ends chapter 10. Question many of you might be asking, do Rakshasas still exist? I personally don't know. If they are out there, I would ask, uh, are they invisible? Is there one sitting next to me now and I just can't see him? Or are they more like David Icke's lizard theory? Of, you know, there's people out there like Nancy Pelosi who are actually lizards. Yeah, see, I think he's just, that's just wacko. But could that be where they are? They have morphed into human beings. Have they crossbred? And so there are people out there who are related to these beings, who are dark beings. Because there are evil people out there. There are truly evil, narcissistic, greedy people out there. Might <sighs> Rakshasas no longer exist? Might have they have gone extinct? Perhaps. I do believe that Sri Acharya of the International Sanatana Dharma Society has said that they are still out there, that these beings have not gone away, they simply changed. They simply work in different ways. They don't bite our chests and tear our bodies apart anymore. They have achieved greater evil by being more subtle. Now some may say that they never existed in the first place, because where are the bones? That's a whole nother conversation, because then we could go into, well, 
Is Rama real? Is Lakshmana real? Show me their graves. Are any of these things real? We have no evidence of any of it. So we can then get in that, and then it's just stories and it's myths and whatever. And that would take this video into <laughs> days and days of discussion, which I hint on here and there, but sometimes I just want to leave it to you. If you have a theory, if you have a book, if you have something, please put it down below. I would love to see it. Be happy to read it. I'm always up for book recommendations, as you see my shelf right next to me, <laughs> full of books. Um, you know, anything at all that you might have on this, this topic might be cool. Put it down below for myself and others. There's also other things we could be discussing related to this verse. Uh, sorry, these two chapters that we've just read. So please feel free to share. And until next time, Jai Shri Krishna. Thank you for joining.